So you're thinking of getting a new iPhone. The big question is, should you go for a pro model? And as someone who's had a lot of experience with both the pro and non-pro models, I've got some insights to hopefully help you decide. Let's get right into it. The iPhone pro models are undoubtedly impressive. From the moment you hold one, you can feel the difference in build quality. The stainless steel frame, the matte glass back, and overall the premium feel set it apart from the standard models. But what really makes the Pro models stand out? One of the standout features of the Pro models is of course the display. The Pro models come with a Super Retina XDR display, in other words, it offers higher brightness, better contrast and support for HDR. And if you're someone who loves watching movies, playing games, this really can be a game changer. But there is more. The Pro models also feature a 120Hz ProMotion display. This means smoother scrolling, better responsiveness and overall a more fluid experience. Once you get used to a 120Hz display, it is really hard to go back to a 60Hz display, which is on the non-Pro models, and it can feel like a noticeable downgrade. I've heard that it makes some people actually feel sick when they go from such a high hertz screen back to a lower hertz display. Then there's the camera system. The Pro models come with a triple lens setup, including the telephoto lens, which allows for better zoom capabilities and improved portrait shots. Features like night mode, deep fusion and pro raw give you more control and better quality, especially in challenging light conditions. If you're into photography or videography, these enhancements can make a significant difference and it could justify getting the pro model. The other side to that story is if you are a pro photographer you may have a camera with you at most times so you might need the phone so yeah it's kind of a toss up there. Under the hood the pro models pack more power. The A series chip and the pro models often have a bit more headroom meaning it's better at handling demanding tasks and future proofing your device. Plus the pro models usually come with better battery life thanks to larger batteries and more efficient components. This makes them ideal for power users who need Need their phone to keep up with their busy lifestyle. But let's not forget about the non-pro models. They still offer a fantastic experience at a more affordable price. The design is still sleek and modern and you get the most of the core features that make an iPhone an iPhone. The display on the non-pro models, while not as advanced as the pros, is still excellent. It's bright, colourful and more than adequate for everyday use. Whether you're browsing the web, scrolling through social media or just watching videos. The camera system on the non-pro models is also very capable. Remember, a lot of the magic that Apple has is in the software and you still get great photos and videos. For most people, the difference in quality between the pro and non-pro models might not be significant enough to justify that extra cost. Performance-wise, the non-pro models are no sledge. They still come with the latest A-series chips, ensuring smooth performance and longevity. And while the battery life may not be as amazing as the pro models, it's still quite good and should easily get you through a day of typical use. So how do you decide? It really comes down to your needs and how you use your phone. If you're a professional photographer, videographer, or someone who needs the absolute best performance and features at hand at all times, the pro models might be worth the investment. The advanced camera system, the 120 hertz display, and the extra power can make a massive difference in your daily use if this is you. Speaking from personal experience, I got the 14 Pro Max to actually start this YouTube channel before moving on to a professional camera. So if you are looking to get into photography, it can be that kind of gateway in while also doubling as your your daily carry and you kind of cut the cost of two in one. But if you're an everyday user who primarily uses your phone for texting, browsing, social media and taking casual photos, the non-pro models offer fantastic value. You'll still get premium experience without breaking the bank. The non-pro models provide a great balance of features and affordability, making them an excellent choice for most people. Now let's talk one of the main drawbacks of the pro models and that is the price. The pro models are significantly more expensive than the non-pro models and this can be a major factor in your decision. Decision, especially if you're on a budget. While the extra features and capability of the Pro models are impressive, they do come at a premium cost. From my own experience with Pro and non-Pro models, I can tell you that they both have their merits. The Pro models are undoubtedly impressive, but the non-Pro models are no sledge. Ultimately, it will come down to you weighing up the benefits against the cost of the device. What do you need? What do you want? Can you justify the extra cost? If the extra features of the Pro models align with your needs and you can justify the cost, then I would recommend just going right ahead and going for that device. You won't be disappointed with a Pro model. And to be quite honest, from my experience with the 14 Pro Max, I wouldn't go back to a non-Pro model. That said, I do not upgrade my phone every year, every two years, maybe every three years. I would try and 
wait until there's a big enough improvement in the device that warrants handing over that extra money. But that said, if you find a non-pro model that meets all of your needs, you'll be saving some money while getting a fantastic device and you can just stick to upgrading your phone every few years, every three years or so, or as I said, when there is a big increase in the features passed down. And you can use some of that money to buy another Apple product and continue pushing yourself into the ecosystem. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos just like this one. I'd recommend you check out some of my other videos such as how to escape Apple's ecosystem or the problem with the iPad. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Capture by Brandon for more behind the scenes content, updates and more videos like this in more sure form. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.